Mr. President, first Detroit auto show in three years. Yeah. Is the pandemic over? The pandemic is over. We still have a problem with COVID. We're still doing a lot of work on it. Uh, it's, but the pandemic is over. If you notice, no one's wearing masks. Everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. And so I think it's changing, and I think this is a perfect example of it. So there we go. And you are very welcome. It's Wednesday, the 21st of uh, September. So there we got POTOS saying, President of the United States saying, well, the pandemic's over and the people around him look like they're in pretty good shape. So so, so that is encouraging. So I guess that's as, as an official as, as, as official as it gets really in the United States. Uh, we'll see what the CDC and all those guys have to say about it. But the, the pandemic is over now. If the pandemic is over, this is the key point. Presumably, this means that we're no longer in an emergency situation. The emergency is over in the United States and people have been talking about normality in, in the United Kingdom now for quite a long time. So I think this has got some important implications. If the pandemic is over, um, what about emergency use authorizations? If we're not in an emergency situation, hasn't the dynamic changed? Hasn't the risk benefit analysis changed? Let's just look at a few things and uh, sort of probe that idea out a bit. Emergency use authorization if the pandemic is over. Presumably we're out of an emergency, but 31st of August 2022, so not that long ago, what, three weeks ago. Um, today, the uh, Food and Drug Administration amended emergency use authorization of Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and the Pfizer COVID BioNTech vaccine, so Moderna and vaccines, to authorize bivalent uh, formulations. For use as a single booster dose. Now these have got the original strain, the original Wuhan strain, and they've got BA4 and BA5. Or, or uh, basically they've got um, the, the, the antigen, which is consistent with BA4, BA5, which is the same. So we've got the original strain plus the BA4, BA5. And that's just been authorized there on the uh, 31st of August. Uh, for each of the bivalent COVID-19 vaccines, the FDA based a decision on the totality of available evidence. So as you would expect with the FDA, this is going to be uh, thoroughly evidence based, is it? Let's just check on what the evidence is in a minute. Um, anyway, um, the, the FDA go on, including extensive, very reassuring words, extensive safety, safety, safety and effectiveness data for each of the monovalent mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. So uh, extensive safety information. Safety and immunological data obtained from a clinical study of the bivalent COVID-19 vaccine that contained mRNA from, oh, from Omicron variant BA1. Have I got confused here? So, so that's BA1. They've got extensive data from BA1. But the authorization was on BA45. No, I, I've got that right. Um, so they've given the authorization for BA45, uh, but the data was based on BA1. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that is similar. Ah, okay, that is similar to each of the vaccines being authorized. So this emergency use authorization was based on a similarity. It's similar. Now, obviously, I'm being a little bit cynical here. Um, and in an emergency situation, we may need to take these kind of uh, measures, um, maybe risks. Um, but if the pandemic's over and we're not in an emergency situation, ha has this changed? Well, um, oh, by the way, the Biden administration has already placed orders for 170 million doses. Now, of course, no one's saying that's going to make any difference to anything. That was just a pre-order. So there we go. Um, good data on BA1, but um, that emergency youth authorization was for BA45. Okay, okay. Now, um, let's just look at what some of the data we have for BA45 is. Now, this is from Science Magazine. We did look at this extensively uh, just a... Uh, a week or two ago, actually, a couple of weeks ago, maybe 10 days ago, we looked at it extensively. Um, from Science Magazine, peer-reviewed journal, data collected by the companies, that's Pfizer and Moderna, 
Human data is only available on the BA1 booster. So we've got the BA1 booster. Now my memory is terrible. What was, what was the um, the emergency use authorization for? Oh, that's right. It was for it was for BA4, BA5, wasn't it? So the emergency use authorization for BA4, BA5. Um, but human data is only available on the BA1 booster. So it looks like we don't have human data on BA4 or 5. In fact, I know we don't. Uh, BA1 trials, and again, this is BA1, not BA4 or 5, did not, did not look for protection against severe disease. People trials are expensive, of course, and take time to organise. So even the BA1 trial, which the authorisation is not for, it's a BA4 or 5, did not look for protection against severe disease. So what can we say about protection against severe disease, given that we're lacking data here? I'm not sure I can say too much about that. Um, for the BA4 or 5 boosters, the companies have submitted animal data. Oh, that's fine. They've submitted animal data. So uh, we don't have human data for BA4 or 5 for which the emergency youth authorization is given. We have it for BA1. But for BA4 or 5, the company have submitted animal data. But this has not been released publicly. Now, um, I did check on this briefly, and as far as I can see, um, this hasn't been updated from when I did this report about 10 days ago. Why not? Why is this not open to scrutiny by the world scientists? I have no idea. I would have thought it's a good idea, but hey, that's, that's, that's only me. Um, not released publicly. Pfizer presented preliminary findings in oh, eight mice. Eight mice. Okay. So the animal data for the BA4-5 uh, is on eight mice. So for the BA4-5 variant, we don't have human data. We don't have human safety data. Uh, even for the BA1, which we don't have, <laughs> vaccine, they didn't look for protection against severe disease. And for the BA4-5, we have um, preliminary findings in eight mice. Um, I'm not making this up. <laughs> this is this is directly. I've given you all the references for this. Um, we have data from eight mice, given their BA four five vaccine as their third dose, as consistent with emergency use authorization. Showed an increase in antibodies responses to all Omicron variants. Well, of course, um, it's bound to do that. Um, we're, we're, but again, we're not given data on whether it. Um, promotes the B and T lymphocyte response. Clinical trials for BA4 or 5 vaccine will begin this month. So the emergency use authorization's in. It, the, the data we have is on eight mice and we're beginning the human trials now. And we are not uh, in an emergency. I think you can see the point I'm trying to make here is we're not in an emergency anymore. Why are we still behaving as if we are uh, in an emergency? Um, I'm not quite sure about that. August the 19th, just another example, 2022. Today, the FDA, this is August the 19th, um, FDA authorised emergency use of Novavax COVID-19 vaccine in individuals 12 through to 17 years of age. This authorization follows a rigorous analysis and evaluation of the safety and effectiveness of the data conducted by the FDA. Glad to see they've got rigorous analysis and evaluation of the safety data. So... This seems to be saying to me that 18-year-old young men uh, can be given um, Novavax vaccine um, under emergency use authorization. Um, that's my reading of, of, of what the FDA is saying. Moving on. Uh, 13th of July 2022 today again about the 13th of July uh, the US Food and Drug Administration issued emergency youth authorization for Novavax vaccine COVID-19 vaccine uh, in, in individuals 18 years of old and older so so that's the that's just the progression of that isn't it um, maybe look at just a couple more uh, 17th of June today the US Food and Drug Administration authorized the emergency use of Moderna COVID vaccine and the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine in children down to six months of age. Um, I have difficulty reading my own writing sometimes. Um, uh, in children down to six months of age. No, that's what it says. That's what it says. Um, 
sometimes I struggle a bit because I'm a bit dyslexic. So the emergency use authorization is covering children down to six months of age, and that's definitely what it said because I've just checked. I've read it very uh, carefully. That's what it says. Uh, December 22nd, 2021, today the, uh, oh, this, is, this is about uh, today the US Food and Drug Administration issued an emergency use authorization for uh, Paxlovid. But again, the pandemic's over, according to POTAS, POTUS, Mr. Biden. So are we still in an emergency situation? Well, I'll let you, I'll let you decide that if we're still in an emergency situation or not. Um, I suspect the situation has uh, changed, uh, but you're freer to discuss this than I am. So there we go. Um, the the uh, Manhattan Project, this is just a sort of story that's come to mind, really. Um, the the uh, scientists from around the world, of course, went to work on the first nuclear bomb in the Manhattan Project. And their justification for that was essential because the Nazi, Nazi Germany uh, could have been working on a bomb. As it, as it turned out, um, they were further behind than we had thought, the Allies had thought, but the idea of Hitler having a bomb, of course, would be, you know, he would have obliterated, we would imagine, New York and London the first day he had it. So lots of scientists worked on that project. It was a flat-out emergency. I don't know if this is a good analogy or not. But then when Germany surrendered, um, n none of the scientists resigned from the Manhattan Project. They just carried on working on it. And it was only after the dropping of the nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki that some, th some thought, just a minute, we carried on working on this when the emergency that I joined to work on this for had already passed. Now, I I'm not passing comment on, on, on the nuclear bombs in, in, in Japan. Of course not. I mean, that's been debated by historians ever since the event. But the point is, the emergency was over and people didn't pause to reflect. And afterwards, they paused to reflect. When it was too late to pause and reflect. After the immediate uh, emergency was over. So if Mr Biden's right, the pandemic's over. In my mind, that means the emergency's over. Is it time to pause and reflect on what the heck we are currently doing. I'll leave you to answer that question and thank you for watching.